All right, so capillary rise uh, accounts for water movement up um, to one meter in height in xylem. Root pressure accounts for more upward movement of water, uh, positive pressure from the roots, but is limited to nighttime, uh, after which negative pressures take over um, and overriding those positive pressures from the root. So what is it that accounts for <coughs> um, that movement above capillary rise during the day? So how does water move upward beyond the limitations of capillary rise? And the answer, <coughs> um, the explanation that uh, is most widely accepted to account for that additional uh, negative pressure or pull upwards is the cohesion tension theory of sap ascent, is how it's um, described in your textbook. Right. This is the most widely accepted theory, but there's always, you know, there's other theories that. Um, uh, are th that from time to time come up and some sometimes um, some little inconsistencies that, that are presented with this theory but this is m the most widely accepted theory and results in um, basically what we refer to as evapotranspiration okay so um, so we could say that there are uh, driving forces, the, the two driving forces of transpiration are let me just down a little bit <coughs> are evaporation from the, um, the mesophyll uh, leaf surfaces, the, the leaf mesophyll cell surfaces or the apoplasts surrounding the mesophyll cells into the surrounding leaf air spaces and then once that water becomes uh, vapor in the surrounding leaf air spaces then the diffusion of the water vapor out of the leaves to the atmosphere. So these are the two driving forces um, for transpiration that we'll be, we'll be talking about. Now, Evaporation, uh, similar to what we talked about with soils, way over here on the right, remember we had those two soil particles where between the particles we have that, um, that sort of interstitial uh, pore here. And as water evaporates, the, the radius of the meniscus of the remaining water becomes smaller and smaller. And that increases the surface tension. And surface tension is produces negative pressure or suction. Well, the same is true as we look at um, the <coughs> mesophyll cells. Mesophyll cells, cell walls, have um, these cellulose microfibers, which we're seeing in this um, view here. So if we back up to this figure here, we're looking at a section of the leaf. Um, you should re recognize the upper epidermis, uh, the lower epidermis, the cuticle, waxy cuticle here on the surface. Um, and then these guard cells, which uh, are the gatekeepers to the size of the stoma or the stomate, or stomata is plural. So if we were to trace water movement as it arrives in xylem into leaf veins, it diffuses out into these cells here, which are the bundle sheath cells. And from the bundle sheath cells diffuses out into the apoplast sort of surrounding here of the mesophyll cells all around in here. And it's this surface, this apoplast area um, of leaf mesophyll cells where water in its liquid phase is now becoming, forming these smaller and smaller diameter uh, radii as water evaporates. So water evaporates from the, the cell wall area surrounding, or the apoplast surrounding the the leaf mesophyll cells um, and so down here at the bottom of this sort of three panel figure we see a uh, highly hydrated cell wall um, high water content in the cell wall where this is that air water oops sorry I'm trying to get that oh, 
that, uh, that air-liquid interface shows relatively no meniscus present. Uh, as evaporation continues, uh, we have increasing evaporation here and then the highest amount of evaporation here. Oops. As evaporation continues, um, the radius of the meniscus between these cellulose microfibers becomes um, smaller and smaller. So this is where we have the highest tension as evaporation continues, surface tension becomes higher, and that's going to um, create the highest uh, tension in general. This is low tension down here. All right, and that tension is then because of the uh, cohesion between water molecules within the liquid is going to um, pull the whole water column upwards, as we'll see. All right. Uh, just to make sure we have our um, area, uh, the um, parts of the leaf identified, we've got that air space here that's identified here. Air spaces are surrounding um, mesophyll cells where water is becoming from going from liquid into a vapor state. And then this air space that we see here just adjacent to the stoma is the substomatal air space. So you want to make sure that you can trace a molecule of water from, uh, let's say, a vessel element in xylem to the atmosphere. So if we were to list a series of structures here in order, um, a series of structures, you should be able to put them in order. Now, before we go on to see how water moves up the water column, um, to replace the water, that the liquid water that becomes vapor, uh, we'll just kind of take note here of where the water potential differences, um, where this was going to have a uh, increasingly negative water potential, whereas here we have the higher um, or less negative water potential um, where when we have more hydrated uh, cell walls in the apoplast. All right, so, whoops, one more thing. As, so as the water evaporates, it becomes, goes from the liquid state to the vapor state. The remaining water has a tr uh, strong surface tension, which is creating that negative tr pressure and because, uh, because of cohesion between the water molecules. And that's going to um, continue beyond just from xylem out into the apoplast, but uh, all the way down through xylem. So in the next figure, we can see mm. uh, that same idea where water molecules are entering the apoplast, then becoming vapor and out into the atmosphere. But the continuation of that liquid state, uh, hydrogen bonding between the water molecules, is going to draw the water uh, column upward to arrive next at that, that air-liquid interface. So cohesion drives um, the upward transport of water from roots, root xylem into uh, stem xylem into the leaf uh, xylem. And, and then at that point, when it's in the apoplast, the water, uh, liquid water, um, of a leaf mesophyll cell is where it's going to evaporate to water vapor. Now adhesion, as you can see here in this uh, diagram, is uh, uh, between the water molecule and the wall of the cellulose, remember, um, is uh, contributing to that capillary rise, um, but also prevents, this is uh, another a aspect of that, and an another a advantage of this, um, this kind of bonding, um, prevents the water column from slipping back down um, through the xylem towards the roots from um, And then as we saw that uh, 
water column continues all the way all the way to the point where <coughs> it's in the soil and and cohesion even pulls water in from the soil um, cohesion of water column can even be strong enough those negative pressures can be strong enough to draw water in from soil all right so what is the evidence that we see to support this uh, cohesion tension theory of sap ascent? Um, the evidence of the theory. First of all, um, water potentials measured in the soil are, uh, as long as water is being um, transported up through the plant, it's going to always be, um, oops, it's always going to be greater, and I wrote it in the wrong direction there, greater than leaf water potential. So that's one form of evidence that, again, water's moving down a water potential gradient. Um, the second is that xylem sap, when measured, is always uh, under negative t uh, pressure. Um, and then the third form of evidence um, is that during the day, during midday or during mid-morning, I, I guess you could say, where transpiration rates might be highest, the stem diameters of perennials um, is slightly less in the daytime than at night. And um, the rationale for that would be that uh, those xylem uh, vessels are under tension, meaning that the, in, the um, walls are drawn inward, kind of um, uh, suggesting that the, the tension is much higher during the day than at night when transpiration rates are low and, in fact, uh, root pressure might be high. Now, as a result of evapotranspiration, the tension in xylem, xylem tension, can build up to uh, something like a pressure gradient of 3 megapascals. Alright, and so the question is, um, how, can, <clears throat> how can the water column withstand such pressures or tension? such great tension in some cases without breaking and the answer has to do with this concept of tensile strength okay so tensile strength if we were to define this is um, <coughs> is the maximum pressure or tension negative pressure or tension that the water column can withstand without um, losing its structure or without breaking. That is tensile strength. And it's a term that's used to describe metals and other materials as well. So normally, uh, xylem can be under tensions of something like negative Anywhere from negative 0 0.5, oops, that's a 3.5 megapascals to negative 2.5 uh, megapascals. So there's a pretty significant, even up to negative 10, there are some, um, some measurements uh, that show even higher tensions. So given those um, high tensions that xylem can be under, if we can compare that to the tensile strength of water itself, um, <coughs> where water's tensile strength equals negative 30 megapascals. So you can see that it has the capacity to withstand. So tensile strength in, uh, for water depends on uh, two factors that we'll talk about more. The diameter of the conduit uh, will affect the tensile strength of water and also the presence of gases. We'll talk about those in the next clip 
video clip.